What is up everybody, Ron Blue back again with another video for you guys. Today we're doing a response video to uh, Urban Legend. We have a little dialogue in the comment section of one of my guitar tutorials that I uh, put out a couple of months ago. Um, in summary, this person is basically letting me know that they're 24 years old and they're starting out as a beginner on the guitar and, and then they ask me if I have any advice for them. So... I do, and I'm going to give you pretty much like my story on how I got to where I am today. And hopefully this helps you, uh, Urban Legends specifically, and anybody else that's trying to find their way um, in playing the guitar. So without further ado, let's jump All in. right, so as most of you all know, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, music has pretty much has been a part of my life, all of my life. Um, my dad is a musician. Uh, he plays the bass and he still is a musician to this day. And he bought me my first bongo set. So I would play the bongos. Um, and then it kind of developed into a passion for drums. But before I got to the drums, uh, he kind of filled the whole, all of the kids out. Um, my sister, my twin sister got a piano. My youngest sister could actually sing. My oldest brother could actually sing. Um, and yeah, so, and then he got me a guitar. And this is the first guitar he got me. And this is what I thought of it at nine years old. So you see what's left of it. I actually still have the neck uh, in the closet there, back here. But I actually I kept this, um, I kept this by accident, honestly. Um, it's just one of those things that, like, I'm glad I found it again. And uh, I plan on restoring it, but that's neither here nor there. But, so this was the first guitar that he uh, got for me. And, you know, like I said, at nine years old, my hands were so small, I could barely, you know, there was no way I was, you know, playing at nine years old. You know, my hands were just way too small. So, um... I finally fell in love with the drums, probably right out of high school. Um, well, no, going into uh, going into high school, right out of middle school. That's when I really got into the drums. And I did that pretty much for four years, right out of high school. I was, you know, really into Tony Royster. And that's one of the things that I would recommend you do, uh, Urban Legend. And as for anybody um, that's watching this video, is really try to do some research on people that you admire as far as like um, famous artists. So Tony Royster at the time for me, as far as when it came to down to drums, was somebody that I idolized because he was one of the best drummers that I've seen at that time. Uh, Thomas Pridgen, I think that's how you pronounce his name, is another beast on the drums. Uh, so I was really into those two specifically because the, on Gospel Chops, they had like a competition. You guys could check that out. If I remember, I'll put that link in the description if it's still on YouTube. That was years and years ago now. But so did that for four years. And, you know, I kind of realized like I was peaking. Like I wasn't, you know, getting better. Like I wasn't, obviously I wasn't getting worse, but I could, I could hold a really nice pocket. I could do some nice feels, but I felt like, this, it just wasn't, um, I wasn't a Tony, Tony Royster. So eventually I got frustrated, you know, and, you know, I was playing for my church at the time. So I was continuously playing on Sunday, but I completely stopped practicing. So, um, two years now out of high school, I'm 20 years old, really kind of just working and floating through life, whatever. I ended up, um, well, I decided to get a acoustic guitar and uh, it was a Fender FA100. And that was one of my favorite guitars just because it was one that I bought my first guitar that I actually bought um, and I gave it away. That's a whole nother story. But anyway, um, so I got the FA100 and I was listening and watching Marty Shorts. 
And Marty Schwartz is a really, really good teacher, guys. Um, I'm going to, if I can remember, have his link in the description below as well. But he's a really, really good um, beginner teacher. Like, he'll, he'll show you, like, the basic chords, um, like the open chords and stuff like that. And some of the beginning bar chords and things like that. Um, so as I got better with that, um, I decided to go through uh, Carrie Marshall. Now, Carrie Marshall, I was really a huge fan of because he was like my first introduction to like that R&B sound, that gospel sound. Because I knew, I knew the sound I was looking for eventually that I would eventually like come to know and love, but I didn't know the name of it. Um, and I don't remember what I finally looked up or what, you know, if he came up in a related video. I think he was actually on Gospel Chops. He was on Gospel Chops um, on their channel. And he was teaching on there. And then um, from there, I followed him on or subscribed to his YouTube and kind of gained all that, like the major sevens, minor sevens, augmented, diminished chords, like those little bit more difficult chords. But actually just kind of going back in the beginning, I would have to say number one thing that you have to do um, is of course, like I said, find that person online um, or in person even that you look up to um, that's a music, you know, the, the musician that you are a huge fan of and just continuously listen to their style. For me, it was when I got into guitar playing, it was John Mayer. Um, the way that he played, I was literally obsessed with. Um, and so I really listened to a lot of his stuff and then related artists, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Joe Bonamassa, um, all these people that I would listen to um, and still listen to to this day. Um, second thing I would highly recommend you do is take notes. Um, and I mean like pen the paper it if you have to. These days we have technology where you can actually, you know, type it on your computer or whatever. But I was old school. And now granted, this is like 2014, but all of this is uh, guitar chords and stuff like that. When I was first learning how to play the guitar, um, chords, all kind of patterns, pentatonic scales, like, you know, and it was, it's one of those things where like, yeah, I learned quickly, like in two years I was in my dad's band and that was my first goal, but it didn't come overnight. It was many nights of, uh, no sleep, you know, that I, that I dedicated to learning how to play, taking notes. This, all this stuff comes from a mixture between um, Marty Shorts and Kerry Marshall. Xerius too, um, he's really dope. Um, just all this stuff, guys. I mean, I was not playing. I was really determined to become the best guitarist that, you know, that I could, that I can be. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of a lot of notes you got to take notes and you have to be able to understand your notes where it makes sense to you um i think a lot of the reason why i was actually making these notes and stuff like that was because i knew eventually i would turn around and teach on i don't know if it was going to be on youtube but i wanted to become a teacher at what i was learning so uh, diminished charts, uh, dominant seventh chords, minor chords. This is definitely the Carrie Marshall era um, of me learning how to play the guitar. Um, circle of fifths, major chord chart. All the stuff that I was really, I was, like I said, that's really going to help you guys get into um, learning the stuff. So that way you don't have to Keep referring to YouTube, you know, take the parts that work for you and you'll be, you, you know, you'll be good. Leave the rest. Or if you like watching the videos, please, by all means, rewatch them or whatever. So, um, so.
so I'm learning all this stuff on my acoustic guitar and my wife, she was my girlfriend at the time, bought me my uh, first guitar that I ever took serious, first electric guitar that I took serious. And that was nine years ago, mm, nine years ago, something like that. And that's this thing right here. So I've had this guitar for nine years. It is, this has a natural wear and tear. The other one has that kid uh, wear and tear. But for this one, obviously my toggle switch is jacked up. But my knobs are very, very loose. Well, this one is. My tone knob is very loose. Um, I have a chip in this here. So I'm only playing with uh, five strings. A lot of people don't know that. Especially from afar, you can't even see it. But you can still make a lot of the... You can make a lot of those same full chords without having that high E because that's the octave. I don't want to get into that, but specifically, um, really having a reliable piece of an uh, instrument is going to get you a long way. It's like looking back at it, um, I've had $3,000 guitars, but this little thing here that she got me, and it's because she got it for me um is literally my favorite guitar um so shout out to her shout out to you ariel um but okay so now she got me this guitar and from there i was like Phew, i took off right so i got everything that i have like my my notes my new guitar i'm learning stuff um but the hugest thing guys that i one of the hugest things that I could say that really took me to the next level was I was learning songs more so. I was learning songs over theory, if that makes sense. So uh, let me think of a song. Um, just a, a simple pop song. Maybe stay with me, right? Whatever, however many chords. Typically, it was about four chords, four to six chords um, in my like pop song. So I will learn those chords, but I will write down each chord. So now when I'm doing another song that has a G major in it, then I can use that because I already, you know, used it and stay with me. For instance, I, I can't remember the specific chords. I'm more so using it as an example, but I will use, you know, different chords from other songs to memorize the chord shapes and create, you know, even some of my own songs as well. Um, so that really, really helped as well. From there, um, like I said earlier in the video, one of my hugest goals, and um, you guys should really set goals for yourself, for yourselves, uh, but one of my hugest goals was at the time from not learning or knowing how to play the guitar at all. My dad doesn't know how to play the guitar. He plays the bass. So um, I had to learn everything from scratch, but I was determined to play in his band. So um, it took me two roughly around two years, a year and a half to two years to actually, um, from nothing at all, learn, knowing nothing at all about the guitar, to being able to play in his band and you know, so I felt like, okay, cool. So now the next step is to go viral, right? So that's when I kind of involved social media. So from there, um, I decided that I was going to do covers to people's songs um, or popular songs um, even. Like I'll start there because that's what originally happened. So it was to do popular songs and then tag, you know, people, not the musicians, but like famous influencers. So for instance, what I did was <clears throat> I was uh, on Instagram and Spice Adams, this was when Spice Adams was first taken off around 2015, 2016. Um, I saw that he had something in, um, on his, in his bio that you could email him. So I just was like, hey, um, I did this cover to the song. I think you may like, 
you're from Detroit, I'm from Detroit, it'll be dope if you just show, you know, if you if you like it, you can post it. That's why I said something like that. And he posted it. So he read it, he posted it, and that was like my first viral moment where a lot of people ended up following, verified people ended up following me. Um, Brandon Marshall from I Am Athlete was uh, one of those people. It was a lot of people. From there, um, I did it, or what I ended up doing on Twitter was mentioning people. So one of my first people from, uh, and I think, by the way, if you guys look, because I mean, he has thousands and thousands of videos now, Spice Adams, but I am still on that page. So you can look way, way, way down back in like 2017, and you'll see me, and I played a Show Me What You Got on the guitar. Um, and I used that same guitar cover to uh, mention on Twitter, Joe Button, and he retweeted it and said, whoa, like, this is crazy, and then you have that realm of people, like, you know, following you and all this stuff like that. I think, you know, over, over time, specifically in that, um, in that time, in that time of me really going from not knowing anything to maybe about two and a half to three years of playing the guitar. My head got way too big, you know, so my hugest thing is, uh, well, I keep saying my hugest thing, but one of the things that I do now is remain, you have to remain humble because you will spiral out of control. You will think you're bigger than what you are. You'll end up going out and embarrassing yourself. Um, whether that is like socially or just, uh, you know, playing with other people as far as like uh, at, at different events. There's been a diff plenty of events that I've had that, you know, I'm thinking I'm big, big headed, macho dude like that got all these retweets and all this love. And this one dude that plays the guitar too blows me out of the water. And it's one of those things, it's like, okay, you go back to the drawing board because it really humbles you. And it's like, okay, I got to figure out, you know, how to get to that level um, and remain humble about, you know, and thankful at the same time about where you're at and growing. So that's another thing that I would really say that you guys um, that are starting out, be humble. Uh, be patient with yourself. I say it in a lot of my guitar lessons. You have to be patient with yourself. There's been plenty of times um, where I wanted to throw in a towel because I just was not getting these chords. And maybe let's just say I would get the chords like those diminished chords are like real. Those are monsters um, as far as shape wise. I would get the diminished chord, but changing from the diminished chord to another chord would be um challenging or from an, one chord to the diminished chord it's like i could not get that speed you know um to smoothly do it and it was so frustrating um bar chords were another thing that was like i'm ready to quit you know i'm just literally ready to quit um but like i said you know it's okay to take time away from playing the guitar as long as you come back to it you know, take as much time as you need to to cool down and everything. I think a lot of times my issue even, uh, even to this day, is I don't take, I say it a lot, but I don't do it. Like, I, I will get frustrated even to this day because I hit one note off, right? And I hear that. I hear it and it bugs me like I need to do it right. I need to do it perfect. And I'll do a trillion takes on one song because I keep hitting this wrong note or I'm not hitting it at the right time. It's just, it's so annoying, but you still, you know, it's a consistent, constant reminder to be patient with yourself because you're human at the end of the day. Um, uh, what else? Uh, from there, when I, I, I will say like when I got better with, you know, my humbleness and trying to figure out what I was going to do with it because, okay, these people were tweeting me and, and retweeting me and things like that. 
but I didn't really know at the time how to create revenue behind it. I thought that when they retweeted me or posted me, the money just comes. Like the people are just gonna ask, oh, like, can you do some stuff? Like that is not how it works. You you have to have either a plan uh, again, and that's the whole thing about, you know, having setting goals. Um, yeah, it's cool to go viral or somebody big to retweet you, but that alone is not going to make you money. So the next goal is how to make money off of this stuff. Like how, how can I make money off of what I love doing? And, um, your talent is going to make room and that's scripture. That's biblical. Um, and, and also I don't think you should do it for the money because there's really not a lot of money in specifically playing the guitar alone. Like you find different ways like YouTube. Um, I offer covers on Instagram where I charge people an X amount to do covers and things like that. Um, and then, you know, and then go from there. Uh, what else? Uh, I charge for events that I play at and things like that. So now, currently, I'm making off of music alone, I would say maybe a grand in total with YouTube, with the covers, with the events. I don't really even do events anymore um, just because I, I'm, I'm more of a solo player. I really do. Um, I can appreciate bands, but I'm just not a fan of them. Um, but neither here or there. I make close to a grand or about a grand uh, a month in music. Now, I do have um, a job, like a nine to five job as well. And I would say, uh, like I've said in some of my other videos, please don't quit your nine to five to pursue music. I mean, it is one of the silliest things um, that all these bigger artists really preach nowadays is like you have to quit your job and work from the ground up to be able to understand the struggle and overcome. Don't quit your job. Make the money. Do this on the side until it becomes your main focus um, where you're making enough to survive and support you and your family if need be or whatever the case is. But you have to you, you got to have something outside of here because then it's really going to be more so about the money than it is about the music. And like I said, you don't want that. You want to be able to, I know for a fact with money or no money, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. I love playing the guitar. I, that's just some. I love music. So that's what I'm always going to do regardless if I make another penny or not. Um, with that being said, like I'm still growing. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how to possibly make that my priority or, you know, my main source of income. Um, I would love to, you know, go on tour. Well, I guess I'm getting older now. I have a family now. So, I, you know, I, at one point, the next goal from doing, um, uh, you know, going viral was to go on tour with somebody famous or whatever. But since then, that has changed. I would say, um, speaking of that, don't be afraid of change. Like, I would have never seen myself doing videos at all, talking specifically, um, or guitar lessons or anything like that. Like, I knew, like I said earlier, that I was going to, um, I was writing all this stuff down for a reason, but I wasn't 100% sure of like how I was going to do that because I'm like camera, sh I'm shy in person, but really camera shy. Um, but uh, don't be afraid to change. Really, COVID really helped me get into this, like doing guitar lessons, guitar covers and stuff like that. Well, I was already doing guitar covers, but guitar uh, lessons and like reaction videos and stuff like that, because there was absolutely nothing to do at that time um, but stay in the house. So it really broke me out of that cage that I really put myself in. Otherwise, I would have been doing it much sooner. But um, 
it's just one of those things of don't limit yourself. Like you may start out doing this, uh, playing the guitar, um, Urban Legend, and then you may be so obsessed with sound, you may become a engineer. Like, and that's way off from guitar playing. But if that's where you're supposed to be, you know, don't fight it. You know what I mean? And um, but if you know, again, um, if playing the guitar is something that you would like to do and to you know get good at it as well, don't fight that as well. Like, also know that it's an uphill battle, and but don't give up. Um, so, like I said, you know, and even currently, you know, I'm. I, I have a job now that is like, uh, is really, really good. It's, it's a really good paying job. Um, but you know, so that's why I really haven't been on here like that doing guitar tutorials because it really does zap all the energy that I have. Um, but I'm really trying to get back into it because like I said, I think I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life, regardless of money or no money. At this point, I'm here to help you all, um, you know, with you all's endeavors. So I really do help. I hope that this video helps you all get to that level that you're trying to get to and beyond. You know, I want I want people to pass me, surpass me. Um, I've I've had plenty of people. Um, some of some of those guitarists that I've got a chance to talk to were really rude, like just like just irritable, like they wouldn't share too much. It was just it was really ridiculous. Um but so I knew that I wanted to be completely different from those people. So that's why I'm just really giving you guys this information, this, my story behind why I do this. Also, you know, different tips here and there to um, hopefully help you and inspire you guys to be um, better musicians. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe to my channel. This is the only channel where you're going to be getting videos like this, reaction videos, unboxings, so much more. The unboxings are coming soon. They're coming soon. They're, it's going to be more so third quarter of the year, but I guarantee you, especially when all the new stuff is officially out there for the public, uh, right now they're in the process of like just announcing these guitars. But when they're actually out on the market, I tell you guys, I'm going to be on it with that. Um, more guitar lessons coming soon, by the way. So, Urban Legend, like I said, for you specifically, man, I hope this helps. Um, like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, guys, hit that bell notification button so you know when I drop these videos. Until um, next time.